Whoa! Excellent! What the? How on earth? Rigged! I call rigged! You know what? This game is inherently flawed as it encourages the materialistic and selfish nature of humans. Why don't we just have one sovereign leader take control of everything? Hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I could make a book out of that. No, don't. Huh, guys, you're just salty that you can't get on the boardwalk. What? In jail? I am good person trademark, okay? This is absolutely unacceptable. I cannot believe this is happening, and I absolutely, this is most, <sighs> not triumphant. I can't believe this is happening! <laughs> you deserve it, you romanticized fool. If only you thought rationally, you would realize that inherently, you're nasty, brutish, and short. Hobbs, my dude, you need to chillax a bit. Not everything is as cold and hard as you think it is. Some things are truly driven, driven by the irrational. That's a good idea. I should write a book, a book about that. Oh my god, Freud, you're such a creep. So back to exploring dreamland, you eccentric moron. Excuse me? You kiss your mommy with that mouth? I should use the resist doing that, no matter how strong your edible urges are. Guys, I have no more money. How is that even possible? We just started. Hmm. It seems that, th that this impulsive spending could be rooted in some internal desire. Could it be your, con your fear of failure due to constant failure as a child? Or, was it, or is it merely to impress your mother? This is injustice! <laughs> Revolution! Rise of the proletariat! Collectivization! <laughs> Dude, that's not even your, your original idea. Shut up, you bougie. Karl Marx out. Communism is the bomb. Live from Europe is Bloody Sunday Night Live! Here's your host, the legendary Iron and Blood Chancellor of Germany, Otto von Bismarck! Hey, thanks for the introduction, me. It was excellent! Welcome to Bloody Sunday Night Live, everybody. How are y'all doing? As you all know, Bloody SNL is a special show that airs once per year on the anniversary of Bloody Sunday, and then it probably gets erased from your minds and history by the communist government. And that's why you've never seen it before, or have you? For tonight's lineup, we have some very special guests, so without further ado, let's get this leftist coup started! Waterloo Doing says, I bet when Napoleon was exiled to an island with no people, he was still the shortest one there. Okay, you know what? Elbow only had 500 people, so I doubt I was the shortest one there. Also, I'm not short. The French and English metric systems are very different, and all of you are uneducated scumbags. At the Comic Sans Collat, people say that Louis XVI was the locksmith who couldn't find the keyhole, but to be honest, looking at Mary Antoinette's face, he probably just didn't want to find it. Well, it's not like I wanted him to use his locksmithery anyways. <laughs> Mercredi salad. <sighs> At Gulag Gulag says, Stalin's album of squad pics is probably filled with a bunch of pictures of him with himself. Hey, that is only because I sent all my friends to gulags or photoshop them out of existence, okay? You see, there is cute one here of me and snowman. He was one of my few loyal friends, but too bad he turned out to be a snake and I had to throw trial him like a Bukharan Lamau. Ha! <laughs> uh oh. What? What the Heil says? When Stalin looked at Hitler's paintings, they were so ugly that Stalin had to photoshop Hitler out of his own self portrait. That hurt me on a personal level. At Avery Fish Lady says, instead of building houses for the poor, the French government is now building houses out of Mary Antoinette's hair. Well, all right then, Madame Poisson. Poisson. Capo dans un feu patesque. Au revoir. At just another Thomas says, that feel when you're a boring Grinch and don't get invited to parties, so you ban everyone else from going to parties. Hashtag petty. Well, we know who isn't getting invited to my next birthday party, you mad mustache and purple hued malt worm. Well, it was very descriptive. Was that Shakespeare? Well, actually, it's from Shakespeare's play Richard III, which I also banned because I banned all plays. Stay Puritan, kiddos. Eponine Deserved Better says, That feeling when you conquer all of Europe, but still haven't conquered that baby fat and Napoleon. 
It's an egg. That Aunt Reich says, At Hitler, how does it feel to have a Reich that was shorter than your mustache? This tweet makes me want to kill myself in a secluded bunker after I kill my wife and kids. Oh wait, I don't have any kids. How sad. At Can I Have Your Interreg Number says, When Oliver Cromwell can get an entire country to stop celebrating Christmas, but he can't convince his supporters to choose a less crusty name than Roundheads. <laughs> Roundheads is a perfectly acceptable name to describe the incredibly stylish wool cuts we Puritans had. Ignorant toad. Blitz Craigslist says, The only thing worse than Hitler's decision to invade Stalingrad in the winter is his art. Why are there so many jokes about me failing art school? Art school is hard, okay? At least I ended up, it didn't end up like that guy. At Better Brands and Red says, Stalin's five-year plan was worse than my 40-year-old uncle's five-year plan, and his plan was just to keep watching anime in his mom's basement. Okay. Everyone on this Twitter site, I want them sent to Gulag ASAP. There are billions of people on Twitter. Uh, I do not care, they are going to be slaving their existence away in my Gulag by tonight. <laughs> Wait, that's not what I meant. Freaking autocorrect. When you start a nuclear crisis because of autocorrect, Soviet soap is here to cleanse away the blood of your enemies. Purchasing this product may require you to provide personal information to the communist government. Soviet soap team is not responsible for any spying violations of personal privacy and mysterious disappearances, exiles to Siberia, or violent public executions that may result from involvement with the Soviet government. This product is not intended to consume this, no matter how hungry the cost of food is making. Do not use this product for anything other than its intended purpose of baiting household cleanliness and or washing out the mouths of such as children. Soviet soap team should not be used to bring any form of enjoyment to life because the only activity of enjoyment that is permitted under government clause 2601 is eternal service to the state. Soviet soap team may cause internal problems and psychological trauma, obesity, midlife crisis, and death of these trailing boundaries. Welcome back to Bloody SNL, everybody! Here is everyone's favorite couple show, A Royal Mess! Today, I'm joined by Henry and Anne, and the lovely Ferdinand and Isabella. As you all know, the way this game works is that each couple will have to correctly answer questions about each other, and whoever gains the most points by the end of the game will win a massive prize of $10 million! Woo! And you'll all have to answer questions about your dating life. First question is for the girls. What is your spouse's idea of a perfect date? Isabella? Burning the Protestants. Ferdinand, what is your answer? That is correct! Woo! And what about you? Beheading his exes? And? Unfortunately, that's incorrect. And! <laughs> Alright, next one. Ferdinand, on your first date, Isabella and you karaoke to which song? Well, it was this catchy little tune by the name of Do You Hear the Heretic Scream? Let's see what Isabella wrote. That is correct! You guys are on a roll! What a romantic song! And it's romantic that you remember! Henry, on your first date, you two talked about what you would name your son if it didn't have to be Charles, Henry, Edward, or James. What was Anne's suggestion? Elizabeth. Unfortunately for your son, that is correct. <laughs> Well, that concludes round one. Fernand and Isabella are in the lead going into round Woo! two. <laughs> right, open. <laughs> round two, the category is everything is relative. Well, you'll have to answer questions about each other's families. Next question is for the girls. When your husbands first took you home to your parents, what was their parents' first impression of you? Isabella? Well, when they found out that I made Columbus sail the ocean blue and earned us lots of money, they were very happy. And then they heard that I like to burn all the Protestants for fun, so they were also very happy about that. And what is your answer? I mean, it was totally my attractiveness. I mean, I, I, obviously I was so hot that, that it made Henry leave his ugly ex-wife. Okay, well let's check for both of their responses. Ferdinand? 
Her dance says, rich and a good Catholic, which means that Isabella gets the point. <laughs> what about Henry? Unfortunately, he says nothing because his parents did not have a lasting impression of Anne. What? Are you kidding me? Why did I marry this insolent piece of doo-doo? Hey, do you want to end up like the last wife? <laughs> okay. And for the final round, our category is Lost to the Ages, where you will each have to answer questions about your couple's history and their past lives. First question is for the girls. Which life achievement is your husband most proud of? Anne? Well, I'm ashamed to say this, but it has to be his finesse skills. Oh, babe! I mean, they're really bad. He's really bad at them, but what can I go do? Well, I think he's bad, but uh, you're still with him, so. You're just salted you're, you're, that you're not with him. Okay, you can keep him. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what Henry's actual answer was. And it was indeed his finesse skills. Um, off to you, Isabella. Well, I'd say his leadership in the Age of Exploration, and of course, there's nothing hotter than a guy that can call an entire island of natives uninhabited. Okay, let's see what Ferdinand says. He says, Age of Exploration, so that's another point for them. Next question is for the guys. Which life achievement is your wife most proud of, Henry? My babe Anne is obviously most proud of getting together with me. Let's see what Anne says. I'm sorry, babe. Oh, she says poetry skills, unfortunately. I'm so offended! Ah! Maybe the reason you go through so many girls is because you can't keep a single one of them. <laughs> Excuse me, it's actually because of their genetic impurity and their inability to have uh -huh. a son. Okay, everyone, let's not get ahead of ourselves by referencing concepts such as genetics that weren't from our time period. Okay, Ferdinand, what is your answer? Well, I'd definitely say it's her ability to sniff out and kill a protestant. Okay, uh, let's that. see what Isabella says. <laughs> She says, finding and killing Protestants very fastly, very well stated. And that's correct, so that means that our winner is Ferdinand and Isabella! than your must- Oh wait, I don't have a mustache! Oh my god, it's so bad! Communism is the bomb. 